I've been able to grow so much. Um, so I used my 401k to leverage the down payment and closing costs for a home. It was so bad that my kids were homeless and I had no more money to spend because there was a lien on the property. And that's where Novarize Invest comes in because I was really surfing through YouTube, like there's gotta be a better way or, or what did I do wrong? Or how could I improve? How could I be more informed of what the process really is? I went from having a $5,000 credit line to now having in 18 months, 45,000. Our single mom started from zero and is now a successful real estate investor. That's today's topic and let's dive into it. Hello everyone and welcome back to Nova Rice. For those who are tuning in for the first time, this is your channel for real estate education. So today's topic, today's video, it's a result of a lot of viewer requests for a motivational video. So today, as you saw in the brief introduction, I have a very special guest on uh, today's video and that will be Gladys Peralta. Gladys was actually a follower of our YouTube channel. She was actually one of our very first followers in the channel and she subsequently became a student at a Real Estate Nova, our real estate investment program. So uh, today I've asked her to come on board to share her humble story and to share with you that anything is possible if you put your mind into it. You do not have to be born a millionaire or with a lot of money. You can start out from scratch and still have the ability to be successful in real life and be able to leave a legacy for your children. So without further ado, let's dive straight into our interview today. And here we have our very, very special guest joining us today. As I mentioned before, she has been following the Nova Rise YouTube community since the channel inception, and then eventually became our student at the Real Estate Nova program. I want to take a moment and give you a very, very warm welcome. Gladys Peralta, thank you for joining us today. Thank you, Lucelia, so much for having me. It is truly an honor to be here and be part of your Nova Rise um, community. It has been such an enlightening um, program. I've learned so much. Um, being part of your program, being part of Nova Rise community, I've been able to grow so much. When I first began watching your YouTube videos, I realized from the very beginning that you were onto something, the way you were teaching your classes, were very practical in the way that it was attainable for me to be able to actually do some of the um, lessons that I was learning from you. Thank you, Gladys, for the kind words. Uh, I'm speechless. Uh, those are really beautiful, beautiful words. It's very rewarding to hear how far you have come um, and, and everything you have done up to date uh, from the moment that you started following us. So before we dive into your story, I will really want to take a moment right here and actually have your notes here um, from the email that you sent me a couple of days ago, giving me uh, an update of what your situation is. So you mentioned just to catch up uh, on what I've been working, obviously increasing credit limits uh, up to $45,000 to improve my credit score now at 765 uh, you obtain a HELOC uh, for a total of $25,000 and you're currently working with Fun and Grow um, to obtain more access to credit and you're now uh, getting up to $20,000 um, in credit card budget or credit card fundings and you're currently working with them as well to increase those limits so definitely great news uh, awesome quite a resume you got right there um and i will really love to hear more about the story but before we jump into the gladys today uh why don't you share a little bit about who you were before uh you joined the channel what you were doing um because we would love to hear your story about who gladys peralta was before joining the community so thank you lucelia for that um so i am a single mom in new york city raising two kids and my son is an adult but my daughter was on her way to college and like every parent's dream is to see their their dreams come true right. to, 
And my daughter was selected to go to university at Buffalo. And one of the things that we, I was concerned of, were we able to afford it? Um, being a single mom and not having that second income at home to have that financial support, uh, I made drastic moves to make sure that I made my daughter's dream come true. Part of that was um, instead of getting a loan, a student loan and having her graduate with debt, I said, well, maybe we should look into investment property in New, New York, Buffalo, Buffalo, New York. All right. So we start, my nightmare starts from there. I had no idea what it took to buy a property. I was so uh, uninformed, uneducated about the process of real estate. <laughs> um, my credit at the time was decent enough. I had savings. Um, from my 401k. Um, so I used my 401k to leverage the down payment and closing costs for a home, a two family home in Buffalo, New York. Excellent move. Excellent move. But there were so many processes um, before the closing that I was unaware of that it became a nightmare. And I lost thousands of dollars in the process. I it was so bad that my kids were homeless and I had no more money to spend um, because there was a lien on the property right before the closing. I didn't, the title search wasn't done in a timely manner. We had to ask for extension um, after extension. It, it, was, it was a horrible experience. I can only imagine. And then what happened after that? So after, um, <laughs> So I didn't understand the the process of purchasing a property. I started going to YouTube, like, okay. what to expect? Because I was really scared. I'm, I I picked up my family, moved to Buffalo, and we have no home to move in. They're going from hotel to hotel. Classes have started. We haven't closed on this property. I I provided a EMD. For those that don't know what an EMD is, is earnest deposit, uh, earnest money deposit, right. um, which kind of keeps the seller from showing the property to other people. Right. So, but it also commits me in buying it. And if I don't purchase this property, they get to keep my money. Right. And I've already lost so much money in the process of the delays from the closing. Mm -hmm. I had three extensions before I finally wow. closed. By the time I did close on this property, I was already $15,000 in debt. My credit was ruined from all the continuous pulls of the extensions for the closing. So I think my credit score had gone down to like a 580. Mm -hmm. I did manage to close though, but with some serious damage to my finance. And that's where Novarize Invest comes in because I was really surfing through YouTube, like there's gotta be a better way or, or what did I do wrong? Or how could I improve? How could I be more informed of what the process really is on real estate? And there's so many small intricates of title search and title insurance and, you know, um, the process of closing and inspections and appraisals that it, it's not just, I want to put in an offer, I want to get a mortgage. It, there's more parts to it. And I did, I wasn't informed of all those. Not like HGTV, right? <laughs> right. There's nothing like, nothing like that. Um, but successfully, she was able to start school shortly after mm -hmm. um, we had moved. Even though they were living in hotel and hotel, I was able to buy them a car. All of these things were just additional financial just everything, all the money was going out the window, just going out the window. Nothing was coming in, everything was going out. And when I became um, more familiar with your YouTube channels, I started becoming very well informed and educated. Wow, Gladys, so that was definitely quite an adventure. Uh, you have some um, 
stressful moments, so to speak, uh, definitely stressful ones. But then in the end, you manage to uh, survive and you manage to come forward just uh, like any other mom will do in order to provide their very best for their children. So um, now that you mentioned, you started searching for information in YouTube and uh, I'm assuming that eventually that led you to my channel, which based on our prior conversation that we had, uh, it seems like you just tune in when the channel was just created, maybe a couple of weeks after. And from then on, you just started binge watching and, and, and pretty much in every single episode that I release on air. And th my question to you is, knowing what you know now from either the channel or from your investment in the program, what would you say you will do differently this time if you were to go through the same process again? So what I learned in your channel is the importance of a title search. Um, and I didn't know about that. And you sometimes um, the problem is that we depend on someone else. I would have assumed, I assumed that my realtor would have had my best interest. Right. But because I didn't know about title search and title insurance, I never knew to ask. Right. But definitely that would be my, my thing is I want to know from the very beginning, I want to make sure that we are having, that we place a title search for this property and get the insurance permit um, prior to purchasing the, any property. That was one of the most valuable lessons I learned because that's where the bottleneck was for me. Okay. And um, I appreciate you sharing that. But uh, as you know, we have people from all kinds of uh, financial levels or financial knowledge, so to speak. So for those who don't know, uh, why a title search is important. Uh, it has to do with liens, right? So whenever, let's say you buy a house and let's say, for example, the previous owner wanted to do a renovation or then hire somebody to fix stuff or maybe decided to not pay property taxes, all of those actions, they led to a lien placed on your title, which just simply means either you pay me or I will just take the house away from you. Because the liens are actually placed at the property level, once Gladys purchased the property, that debt that was placed, that lien that was placed on that house that she set her eyes on were actually um, transferred over to her and she became liable for those debts. So that's in essence what created that headache for Gladys and that now she learned that if she were to hunt for another property or decided to continue to grow her portfolio, then that will be the number one item that she will check on the list. So um, thank you once again, Gladys, for sharing that. And then um, what was the transformation like? So now we know the before, now we know what you will do different, but what was it like for you learning about all that information that was available out there? Like, did it have uh, any kind of impact? I will assume that it had some kind of impact, but why don't you share that uh, with the rest of us who are tuning in today uh, to, to get to know you? So after buying a home, being now $15,000 in debt, um, and a terrible credit score, how do you move out of that hole? Mm -hmm. And that's where I just, I was so dedicated to your channel and learning everything that you provided on information about credit, because that's where I needed to fix. I knew that I would not be able to do anything moving forward mm -hmm. if my credit wasn't fixed. And, and I have to say that uh, the other important part that I learned in your channel was a property manager. I don't know anything about managing a home or screening for tenants and um, job history and their credit history. So that was my second piece that I learned that I needed as soon as I got the home was how to get the right property manager that's going to put the right tenant in there for me. So those were the things that I had learned I, I, I've grown so much along the way and that has helped me so much. I was able to get the right property manager and he was able to get me a good tenant. And with time, that helped me as well. But the most impressive thing that I want to let the public know is when I bought my home, the only credit limit I had was $5,000. That was my credit limit was $5,000 because the mentality I had is that 
as long as I don't have a lot of um, access to credit, then I could never be in debt, which hurts me in the long run if I'm thinking Mm -hmm. of investing or opening my own um, LLC for and creating a real estate portfolio. $5,000 credit line, personal credit line is not going to help you. Right. So I began um, uh, improving my credit by just doing the small steps of doing the credit line increases on the uh, current accounts that I did have. Right. And that really made, began to, I began to see a quick improvement on my credit score gradually. I remember there was a YouTube video that you said that we should be doing a credit increase every six to 12 months. And that's that's exactly what I, I, I I'm guessing you've milked that process pretty much, right? <laughs> yes, I have. And it worked. I went from having a $5,000 credit line um, to now having in 18 months, uh, 45000 45, Wow. Yeah. Woo-hoo. In 18 months. And with a score of a of 580, I believe I had, you, you don't, you almost feel like that would never be possible. Right. It, it's, it's a hard reach. Anyone would think that's a hard reach, but as I, I watched your videos, I, I did all the things that you had taught along the way of the importance of paying on time, paying more than the minimum, asking for credit increases, be careful with um, exceeding inquiries, and I didn't have any inquiries on credit cards, but I had so many inquiries on extending the mortgages that I was able to contact the credit bureaus about that this is just one pull because it was the right. same bank pulling. And that I also learned um, in, through your YouTube channels. I've learned, I've implemented a lot of the pieces that I've learned along the way. So there was this, video that you had that just blew my mind because now I'm looking at my mortgage statements and my escrow and my interest. And I'm like, I'm really going to be stuck with this monthly mortgage payment for the next 30 years because so little is going into principal. Right. And I discovered your video on leveraging credit cards. Yeah, definitely. (laughs) That is like, Beautiful. It was so beautiful. Um, So I did do that to one of my credit cards. I had pulled out some money and now my credit has gradually improved by this time. By the time I I, I, I did this, my credit had improved. It was, it wasn't that high, but I think it was over 670. I was able to get a new credit card, by the way, I had used, and I think I mentioned this to you, I had used your links um, to get credit, apply for credit cards. And I was instantly approved. I don't know if it's anything to do with your name. <laughs> you do get additional sign up bonuses by using my link. Uh, so you can li- literally just go to the bank and sign up for it. But through our links, you get an additional, uh, I, I mean, grant that credit card companies that can change it whenever they want. But if you use the links, you do get um, uh, an additional reward, so to speak. But um, on in the sense of getting them approved, that was all you. That was all your hard work, uh, your dedication, your determination to becoming better than the person that you were yesterday. And uh, also to uh, want to live a legacy to your children, which is something that you've emphasized over and over again, perhaps not in this video, but we've had prior conversations. And um, you mentioned that you uh, eventually, as you grow old, you don't want to be a burden to them, that you want to set an example, which I'm sure a lot of the parents were tuning in today, whether uh, they're married or whether they're single parents. In essence, their goal, it's pretty much the same. They want to live a legacy for their children. So um, why don't you talk to us or share with us a little bit about 
how that motivation came through or was it always there? And then how, how did you just continue to propel? Because uh, I've experienced the whole messing closing and I know it's, it's nothing fun whatsoever. Um, and you're doing it alone and with two children, basically homeless, running all over Buffalo um, and then dealing with classes at the same time. So uh, share a little bit about that uh, with us who, who, who are tuning in. Uh, so my background is um, my father, my parents came from Ecuador um, in the early 1960s, when, which was a great time to come and invest in New York City, if you could. Right. Um, but unfortunately, um, my mother died when I was young because um, she was very ill. Health, she had a health condition. So my father watched over me. Um, until now, I still have them. And, you know, I love my father. I'm very, very close to my father. And he's the type of Latin American man that he's the provider and right. he's the example and he keeps the household together. And I learned that from him. What I never learned from him, and I, I realize now that it's because he never knew, it's um, financial freedom. He right. was terrible at managing his money. So if he didn't know how to manage his money and prepare himself for the future, for retirement or anything, he would not be able to teach me. Right. And now my father, you know, thank God he's still alive. I have him. Um, but he is 86 years old and he has, um, he lives off just a plain social security check. So I, I provide and take care of my father and I do as much as I can for him. And though I don't want to say he's a burden to me, right. I know how difficult it is for him to struggle month by month with his bills mm -hmm. and medications. And when he needs to be hospitalized, um, he sees the pain that he causes because he can't help himself anymore. He was the man that was always bringing in you know, the, the check, right now he feels, he feels hindered. He feels more disabled now and it's more mental because he can't provide right. and he feels like he's a burden. And I, I feel terrible because he feels that way. Right. I don't ever want my kids to be in the situation that, um, he's in. I don't want them to think that I want to become a burden to them. Right. And there's nothing more important than um, financial literacy and knowledge. Um, he didn't know to think about retirement or 401ks. He didn't understand that. He knew I have to pay the rent, I have to pay the light bill, I have to pay the phone bill, and I have to pay, you know, put the food on the table. Right. That was he knew, that's all he knew, and that's all he did. And he didn't prepare himself for his older times. His, um, when, when things, the cost of living now is so unattainable in New York for right. low, you know, low income families or even our seniors. It's right. very difficult. Um, so that's kind of where it stems from that I don't want to do that to my kids. I want to be able to leave them something, not only financially, but information. I want them to be able to fend for themselves, be, to be able to understand the importance of financial literacy, um, because it is very difficult in these times to depend um, or to live from paycheck to paycheck right. or, or to depend on how the economy goes. Um, because as you've seen, what's happening now is Right. The stock markets is like a pendulum. They swing one way and they swing another. You have no control over that. You only have control over the decisions you make, like real estate. Right. Um, right. You can always buy and sell and hold and flip. You have many options, but those are the options that you choose. It's not like the stock. You can't choose or decide which way the stock market goes. Right. You just have to ride along with it. You just have to ride along with it. But you can always decide, like, I can, I have enough to buy another property or I have enough to buy and hold. I have enough to buy and flip. You make those choices and you have more of a financial control 
of making those decisions than just other other means of income. But one thing I do know, it's you're not living if you're living paycheck to paycheck. You're just surviving. And that's not living life. And that's kind of what I've seen my father do. He was just surviving. Paycheck to paycheck, month to month, paying rent, paying the bills, um, putting food on the table, but never thought about tomorrow. So that's where I am with my, my children. And they understand. And they've learned a lot. I share my videos with them and I tell them, you know, I, one thing I always tell everyone is um, tomorrow is not promised to everyone. So you have to be able to learn things today because right. I, I, since I lost my mother when I was very young, I learned things the hard way. I've always been self-taught. And um, I'm, I'm really, really grateful that uh, you are opening yourself up and sharing your story. I'm sure that more than one person can relate. I certainly relate with you because my father got sick a couple of years ago. Um, it's one of the reasons why the YouTube channel started. And I had the resources, I had the knowledge, and even then it was difficult. So I can only imagine for uh, those families who don't have the information, who feel that, hey, I either have to choose between the life of my loved ones or getting enough money, but even if they were to choose for the life of the loved ones, how can they even afford to save the life of their loved ones? So your story is very, very moving. Um, thank you so much for sharing it. I'm sure your kids, when they watch this video, they're, they're going to be so proud of you and so proud of everything that you have become uh, over the past uh, 18 months. And um, so that leads me to the following question, right? So if you share that um, you've done a lot, you managed to increase your credit line, increase the quality of your credit score. Uh, so it seems that um, the channel in itself can do a lot for you, right? But then you still decided to go ahead and join the Real Estate Nova program, which is the private mentorship program. Can you um, share with everyone why did you decide to do that? Because, I mean, it sounds from all I hear that you were doing great up until that point, just with whatever you were accessing through YouTube. <laughs> Thank you for saying that. I realized that I came so far with just watching your YouTube channel how much more would I learn by being part of your mentorship program? Okay. And getting the larger scope of everything. And it has been enlightening. All that, that email, that last email I sent you was, everything after that was after joining your um, mentorship program. Everything I was able to attain and happen was after the mentorship. When I joined their mentorship program, I still did not have $45,000, um, but I was getting up there. Yeah. It was, it was, it was uh, I think it was in the low 30s um, when I first joined, but I was still able to increase. Definitely a lot of great work from 3,000 to 30,000. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, I, it was, so that's exactly it. <laughs> if I was able to do this just watching her YouTube videos, how much more would I be able to learn what being part of her mentorship program? And everything that I wrote to you was it. I was able to get a HELOC. I was able to, um, right now as we speak, I have my realtor looking for another property. <gasps> awesome news. Yeah, Great stuff. All in 18 months from what beginning to, but I feel that it's more because of the mentorship program. The mentorship program really has taught me um, how to navigate in selecting properties and finding locations. Did I want to buy, you know, even question myself, did I want to buy another property in Buffalo or did I want to go to another state? You know, so I was able to learn many of the tools that you had and how to use that to my advantage to make sure that I'm not going back to that first horror nightmare that I did the very first time. I didn't want my second experience to be that. With all the knowledge that I had learned from your program, I, I know now that I am well-informed and well-versed in looking for the property that I want. 
Thank you. That's uh, very, very thorough what you did. Thank you for walking us through everything um, you have learned so far, everything about your experience. Now, um, before our recording of uh, this interview started, you had been mentioning something about how much you love mentoring people, mentoring the younger version of what you see could possibly be yourself and how uh, there's a lot of information out there, but perhaps they can use a little bit of a push to leverage that so that way they don't repeat the same mistakes that you made or that I made. What would you say to everyone who's tuning in today who is, um, let's say, falling under the category of that younger generation? Like, what would you... Um, what would you want them to walk away with? Look, what I want them to walk away with is to let them know that it's very important for them to be informed. I, I always feel that in our Latin community, I'm going to say because that's I mostly work with um, Hispanic people, is the importance of understanding the tax codes and understanding um, the rules and regulations and all that they have that could work in their favor. Um, I work with many young women and I kind of um, try to instruct them about the importance of having good credit, expanding their credit, investing in a 401k, um, being informed. Like uh, uh, Many women that I've come across don't have a 401k, don't want to invest. They're thinking about the money now, not the money tomorrow. And we just lack information. And, and the other part is that sometimes we fail as older people, we fail to share it with them or even ask because financial, um, people's financial businesses is so personal. Right. That we build barriers in asking or just advising people what it is that um, they should be doing with their money. But it oh, as long as it comes from the right place, they listen. They'll be like, oh, that's a great idea. Oh, thank you. Because I shared your videos with my friends and I tell them the best thing is knowledge. You need to be informed of the information that's out there. Because if you don't know, how can you learn to improve the lifestyle that you're living or the future for your children or for yourself? You don't want to be the elderly person waiting for a government check. Right. After working years um, within a, at a job, you don't want to be that person. And I don't want to see you be that person because I care about you. I want to see you grow. I want to see you improve. I want to see you progress financially. Right. So I hope that they take these opportunities to take time and be like, you're right, I need to learn this. And there's so much information out there, which sometimes can be concerning because you wanna direct them to the right path because not all the information out there is accurate or is in their benefit. Wow, that's uh, definitely quite a speech. Uh, you, you blow me away with those kind words, beautiful words, and the fact that you are sitting out here willing to openly share your story uh, for the betterment of others to let people know, hey, this is me. I'm just like any other regular random person uh, who just came across uh, this information, but I decided to do something with it. I decided to change my life because you know what? I don't want to repeat the path. I don't want my background to dictate who I am. I don't want to just, you know, remain in the status quo and, and not do anything about it. I want to live a legacy for my children. And that's what I'm doing as painful as it was, because at the end of the day, if it was so easy, then everyone will be doing it, right? It takes uh, yeah. effort, it takes energy, uh, it takes a lot of courage as well to be willing to just get up after a big fall and see, you know what? I'm gonna do things differently this time. Um, so I really, really appreciate uh, your time being here, Gladys, today. Um, is there anything else you would like to share with uh, everybody before we say goodbye? I, I do wanna say something. I wanna say, um, one, the most important thing is I how much I am so grateful to your program. I have learned so much. Your information is so true and valuable and precise and accurate because the things that I've learned from you, I've actually done. 
and the outcomes have just continued to grow and grow and grow. And I am, I will be forever grateful to Novarize and Bath. And Aww. the other thing is that, I, well, it's coming from a great place because. That's beautiful. Thank I, you. I do see, I see the, I see the light at the end of the tunnel. And I don't mean death. I mean, I see. The end goal. <laughs> <laughs> the end goal. Exactly. The end goal. The other thing I also want to say is something that you've mentioned in some of your videos is risk tolerance. I, I love that term only because if I don't take a chance in making these changes, I'll never know what the outcomes are. So I've learned that. So thank you. Completely agree. If you don't take risk, then nothing happens. You can remain where you are, but uh, it might be worth a try. Right, Gladys? Absolutely. Well, you have the right mentor. When you have the right mentor, Yes. Great. I guess we can, we can all agree with Gladys on that. So uh, thank you very much, you all, for tuning in today. And a special thank you for Gladys for sharing her time out of her busy schedule with all of us today. And um, feel free to contact Gladys or just leave her a comment right down in the description box below. Uh, whenever she, she is a very busy woman, but when she has time, I'm sure she will, you know, just answer okay. your questions away yes all right so uh thank you for tuning in uh do not forget to hit the like button or subscribe if you're tuning in for the first time and until then i will see you guys next time take care bye bye thank you,